force the mission we want you to think about a couple options. One is this one. Take it out of your bulletin. Make sure you have it. It's the same thing on both sides. We're economizing on ink. Susan did a good job. Yes. So take a look both sides. This is how it works. This is a reverse advent calendar. Anyone have the kind where you open a door? Raise your hand if you have an open a door or something that you have every day, one little, maybe a prize or something. Perfect. You know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Well, in this kind, this is a reverse. Instead of getting something, you collect something. Now, maybe you'd like to collect one each day and maybe just go in your pantry and find something that looks like that. Or maybe you want to go with, as a family and go to the grocery store. I know that can be dangerous. <laughs> I know. But a family in the grocery store, and then you get some things. And then at the end, at, because it is the reverse, then you will have a huge box of food for us to give to our local food bank, which is at the Salvation Army. Got it? Work it how it fits out. There's lots of things. There's something for each person in the family. Maybe check, check, check. Maybe if you live by yourself, you say, you know, I'm, I, I can't do the whole thing. I'm just going to do some of them. And that's okay, too. But Advent is a time of preparing. So we're going to gather the food, whatever you can do, what fits your family as you, too, prepare for the coming of the Christ child. The other project is socks. We support, you saw the tree downstairs. If you haven't, you will when you get your snacks today. The Mission, um, Mission Fellowship in Worcester ministers to homeless. And those people tell us that we need, they want to give white socks. Some people, they don't have socks. And by giving white, they're not going to keep them forever and ever and ever. And get the disease and the, all of the things that's involved with that. So it's important to give, when we give socks, to give white socks for the, those ministers of the street, so to speak, that help out in Worcester for the homeless. Nod your head. Yes, yes. <laughs> Was there anything else I was going to do, Al? Uh, just last Sunday, so many of you brought in food. And on Monday, after we decorated the sanctuary, Frank, Vaughn, and myself, and I forget, I think that was it that went down to the Salvation <coughs> Army. It was a neat situation. They had 240 boxes of food put up to distribute. And they had a line out the front door and out to Ridge Avenue. And here they were waiting for food, and they're saying, we're cleaned out. And there we came in the back door with a truckload of food. Thanks be to you. Good morning, everybody. So our annual cookie walk will be held on Saturday. Can you hear me on this? Okay. Um, Saturday, December 14th. So the cookie walk, all the proceeds go to the Relay for Life in the Greater Gardener area that our Team Spirit in Motion um, walks for. So if anyone can make cookies, we ask that you make about three dozen of the same kind and you can bring them to the church Thursday, Lisa's going to be baking and needs help. So anyone who wants to bake, decorate cookies, you can come Thursday, December 12th from 9 to about 5, and I'll be here in the evening. So if anyone wants to drop off cookies, I'll be here then, and Friday evening we'll set up. Um, and then Saturday we'll be here about 8.30, and the walk is from 9 to 12. You come in and you pick what kind of cookies you want. That's so you walk around the tables and... Um, we charge by the pound, and you can get a nice variety, makes nice gifts. So if anyone can bake, we're also taking monetary donations to pay for baking goods um, or donations to Relay. Also, if anyone would like to join the team, I have 
um, of information in writing that you can sign up online. We'd love to get walkers. I think we have like five right now, so <laughs> we need some help. Thank you. So this sure is a season of giving, and that's what we're doing, asking everybody. <laughs> Every Thank you, Tom. <laughs> I'm not real coordinated with these kind of things. <laughs> anyway, um, so um, this next Saturday, the 7th, um, the deacons are doing our, tri our annual uh, um, cook well, goodie baskets for our, our elder um, members. And we deliver them um, that same day. And I'm looking for people that would be willing to bake something or buy some candy or make brownies, cookies, whatever goodies that you feel like you might be able to do. And we're asking, we need it, we're gonna fill about 50 baskets. Some of the, um, actually some of the goodies will be going to um, uh, the missions solicit people for their community meals. And so at this time we send those businesses a little goodie basket as well. So it totals about 50 people. And, and if you're able to do this, please individually wrap the, the cookie or the, the piece of fudge or whatever it is that you feel that you can help us by making. So um, anyway, and I would need, uh, if you could, if you think you can do this, maybe you could see me afterwards so I can get a feel for how much we've, we've got to count on, okay? And also, uh, Don Rosati asked me to um, see if anybody might be interested in starting to do the, the video um, from up in the um, balcony. Uh, Don, you said it's, it's pretty easy uh, to do, and um, there's training if anyone can do it. He's looking for maybe somebody to do once a month. Is that right, Don? Yep. So, um, Don, if you want to crank your necks, you'll see him up in the balcony doing this same job now. So see him after worship if you are interested in this. And we're, we're gonna be losing a few people because some people go to Florida and some people just have other things to do. So it's, a, it's if we're gonna be able to continue to uh, do the worship service online, we need to get some volunteers. Thank you. Well, speaking of Salvation Army, I had hoped to have those angels that we do each year, but. They were right out straight, obviously, before Thanksgiving, and then they were closed Friday, which I stopped down there. So I hope to get those uh, this week to have them for next Sunday. And we do 25, as many of you know, and uh, they give us a, uh, a size and an age of uh, the child you need to purchase and uh, bring him back to church like a few days before. It's like a week before Christmas. I don't know the exact date. and. Uh, unwrapped and uh, with your little tag in there. But I'll uh, hopefully have these next Sunday for you. Thank you. So the uh, community meal um, that we offer is Friday night, this coming one, and, and it's our holiday one. And uh, we started last year doing uh, our little raffle for them. Uh, it's kind of like a, something special for them to look forward to. And it's just mostly small items. Um, but I know some of you have already donated a few things. But if anybody has anything small, like we're, we're talking like $5 and under, just a little something for our table. We're trying to get enough items for the raffle table so that everybody that comes to the community meal this year will get some thing to go home with. And so if you want to just drop it off in the office this week, if you have something, I mean, it could be like a, a special little ornament. It could actually be like homemade cookies in a little tin or... Um, you know, something along that idea. We'd really appreciate it. We have about maybe 40 to 50 things collected so far. So appreciate that thought. Thank you. And um, from the search committee, you'll see that the core value list is in your bulletin again. Um, we probably got about seven or eight responses last week, and we didn't have enough people to um, have a conversation after church. So if you would be willing to um, circle this and follow the instructions, the search committee is going to take this and work on it um, kind of without you guys around. And then we'll report back to you on the, on the top values that the church overall has. So if you would fill this out and then put it in the um, offering plate 
or hand it to me um, on your way out of church today. I'd really appreciate that. Um, the other bit of information that I want you to know is that we are going to have, um, we're going to be taking in some new members in January, and the new member class will be on the 12th after church, and the reception in church will be on January 19th. January, what did I say? Yeah, January 12th. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> yes, January 12th and January 19th, not during the Christmas season. Um, let's see, and I also just wanted to let you all know about Tom Duty. Um, his sur hip surgery has gone well, but um, I think it was yesterday he was admitted back to the hospital with an intestinal blockage of sorts. Um, so continue to keep him in, his, in your prayers. Um, surgery, the hip went well. His, his belly is not reacting well. Okay, great. Um, so with that, what are we doing next? Passing the peace. Okay. Ah. Peace of Christ be with you all. Let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. Peace, my dear. <laughs> of the Advent candle with the Johnson family. Thank you. <laughs> Who's coming? The Johnsons? Where are they? They're, co they're coming, they're coming. Oh, there they are, hiding in the corner. Reading? Nope, reading. For, just right straight down. A reading from Romans 8, 24 to 25. In hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. We light this candle looking for hope wherever we are today in joy or sorrow, anxious or calm. We place our hope in you, O oh God. Be with us on this journey. Amen.
Please join me in the call to worship. The God of peace calls us to this season of anticipation. The God of love summons us to this time of worship. We are glad of God's invitation, how good it is to gather in God's house. Let all people and all nations bow together in praise. Let us wake from sleep to welcome our salvation. Here we will seek the light God offers us. Here we will prepare to walk in God's path. Let us live properly according to the <clears throat> light of day. Let us watch for the one who makes all things new. We will ready ourselves as Jesus' disciples. We will watch and wait and serve in Christ's name. Please join together in the hymn of praise. Wake, awake, for the night is flying. That will be 108 in the red hymnal.
Please join me in the prayer of invocation. Great God, Great God whose word is sure, lift us up in anticipation of Christ's advent among us. Too often we have gone about our business without regard for the coming of your kingdom. We have been asleep to your spirit's guidance and restrained toward your call for holiness. We defend our baser nature and curb our spiritual hunger. We misuse our relationships, resist the hard work of justice. O oh God, we are not ready for the day when you call us into account. Forgive us and awaken us to the light of Christ, that we may truly walk in all his ways. We ask this in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Children of God, hear God's word of promise to us. God is full of mercy and loves us deeply. Even when we were dead in sin, God brought us to life by what Christ has done. And God has given us a place with Christ in heaven. My friends, in Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven and our lives are made new. Let us praise our glorious God. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter oh, oh, 2, wait, verses wait. 1 through 5. Vincent, wait, oh. we got to do the uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, scripture okay. first. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Good morning. I have a new little echo today, and uh, we'll be joined by Emma Hager as the echo. <laughs> okay, I'm just your echo. She doesn't need a step stool, but I do. <laughs> I feel like so tall. Rub it in, Emma. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We will be echoing Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go. Let us go to the house. Let us go to the house of the Lord. The Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates. Within your gates, O oh Jerusalem. O oh Jerusalem. Jerusalem, built as a city. Built as a city, which is bound firmly. Bound firmly together, to which the tribes go up. The tribes of the Lord. The Lord was decreed for Israel. To give thanks. Give thanks to the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord, there. Thrones for judgment were set. The thrones of the house of David. The house of David. Pray for peace. For peace. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within. Peace be within your walls. And security. And security within your towers. For my brethren and companions sake, I will say. Peace be within you. Peace be within you. For the sake of the house. 
the house of the Lord our God. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. I will seek your good. All right. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. You can find that on page 587 in your pew Bibles, or up on the screen. <clears throat> the word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills and all nations shall stream to it. Many, people, many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion sh shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come let us walk into the light of the Lord. Our second reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. You can find that on page 987 in your pew Bibles. <clears throat> Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than we became believers, than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and in drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Our next reading is from Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. You can find this on page 859. But about that day, an hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, <clears throat> so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. God bless the reading of these words. Have any of you had the same problem that I've had since we set our clocks back a couple weeks ago? My body's inner clock hasn't adjusted yet. I'm waking up earlier and unable to fall back asleep. But then by mid-afternoon, I want to crawl back in bed, and if the day is cloudy, forget it. I'm asleep the whole day. <laughs> and as much as I really don't like waking up early, there is a gift to it. I get to watch the sunrise. When I see that dark sky begin to brighten, I know that a new day has come. Today is the beginning of Advent, a new day in the Christian year. And on this day, we hear a lot about the coming of a new day, the day of God. We hear the night is far over and the day is at hand. And we are invited to wake up and walk in the light of the Lord. In our Old Testament reading today, we say Isaiah, whose eyes are opened 
and he is alert to the joy and peace that will come on the day of the Lord. But he also sees the goal in which God will teach us his ways that we may walk in his paths. And his challenge to God's people is to wake up and live in the light of the Lord. In our gospel too, Jesus calls to his people. He challenges them to keep watch for the coming day, the day of salvation, when the kingdom of God will find its fulfillment. We are called to be alert and ready. Jesus tells us we will not know the exact time, but now it is time to live in anticipation. We are to wake up and live in the light of the Lord. We hear the same challenge in the Romans passage, where Paul says salvation is too, nearer to us now than when we first believed. In other words, the day of God is coming, the night of evil is almost over. Even in the darkness of this world, Paul holds out God's promise to us, and it resounds with sharp, stark contrasts, waking and sleeping, night and day, darkness and light, near and far. It's time to wake up and live in the light of the Lord. Every year we journey through the church calendar. We move through the seasons telling of Jesus' birth, life, death, and resurrection, and we consider the impact of his life on our life. But we do not begin the church year with Jesus' birth, his beginning. Rather, we begin with Advent, a season of waiting, of hope, and of anticipation. It's a time when we focus on the promise of the one who is yet to come and the promise of the day which is yet to be. We do not begin with a time of celebration. Rather, we begin with a call to open our eyes, to pay attention, to wake up and live in the light of the Lord. It's a time to live in anticipation. Like an alarm clock, Advent calls us to get up and get dressed ready and clothed in Christ in the garments of light. In the morning, in those wee hours of the day, before the alarm clock goes off, you can look out to the horizon and see the clouds begin to turn wonderful shades of color and the faint announcement of the sun's rays begin to pierce and overcome the darkness. That is valuable time, an exciting time. It's a time to greet the day, to live with intention, we look toward the coming day with our plans, our priorities, and our list of things to do. Our life begins to take direction. We live by anticipation, with readiness, and we act accordingly. That, my friends, is Advent, our spiritual sunrise. It's still dark, but faith sees on the horizon the faint announcement of God's light that pierces through the world's darkness. We see glimpses of grace, faint tinges of peace and hope. We sense the stirring of God's spirit within us and God's whispers among us. It's time to live in anticipation, to step into that day and all that it has in store for us. Now is the time to wake up and live in the light of the Lord. Paul suggests as we anticipate the coming day of God, that we put off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. We are, live to we are to live consistently with what we might call a Christian lifestyle. In fact, Paul directly challenges us to clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. Avin's call and the Spirit's work is to do just that, to clothe us with Christ, to shine the light of the Lord into all the dark corners of our lives, and to lend us, lead us to the light that we might walk in a very special way. We are to live in a way that radiates the love and grace of Jesus Christ, especially in the dark and dreaded, painful and fearful places of life. We're to wake up and walk in the light of the Lord. Now you probably have all heard of St. Augustine. Augustine lived in the fourth and fifth century and was what some of us would call a live wire before he became a Christian in 386. There's no doubt he lived a life of carousing and hung out with the wild bunch. He was a heartbreak to his mother and a handful for his priest. He tried every tantalizing venture and every new philosophy of his time. Yet he spoke of being with a friend and sorrowfully decrying his inability to change. 
in his despair, he suddenly heard what he thought was the voice of a child saying, take up and read, take up and read. He didn't remember any child's game with a phrase like that, but the words stood out. He went back to the bench where he had been sitting and found lying on it a copy of Paul's letter to the Romans. He opened it and immediately read the words that are part of our scripture reading this morning. As in the day, let us walk becomingly, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in promiscuity and licentiousness, not in strife and envy, but you put on the Lord Jesus Christ. St. Augustine said that at that moment, he opened his life to Christ. Oh, he had known about him. He had debated about him, but he had never surrendered his life and given himself to him. He opened his life to Christ at that very moment and felt the loving and cleansing touch of his savior. Augustine was never the same again. He said it this way, no further would I read nor needed I, for instantly at the end of this sentence, by a light, as if it were a kind of serenity, it infused my heart and all the darkness of doubt vanished away. Augustine had that Advent, Advent experience I'm talking about. He found his way out of darkness. He began to wake up and walk in the light of the Lord. He began to live with the anticipation and with purpose. And what a life he lived for Christ, becoming first a priest, and then a bishop, and then a theologian, and finally a saint. That, my friends, is what we are also invited into. Whether we lived in North Africa in Augustine's time, or in rural Massachusetts in our time, these words of Jesus and Paul and Isaiah are still very appropriate and timely. It's been 2,000 years since Jesus first walked this earth, but his words still call to us and challenge us. We are not to be anxious or frenetic, nor lethargic and indifferent when it comes to anticipating the coming of Christ. Rather, we're to stay alert, pay attention, be open to God's presence and hopeful in God's promise. Wake up, keep yourself aware of God's promise, listen to his word, sing his praise, worship among his people, make a daily habit of prayer and thanksgiving, anticipate his day, not just the day of his coming, but this day as his coming. Get dressed, put on Jesus Christ, reflect his life in your behavior, walk as he walked, be the kind of person he was. Ask yourself, what would Jesus do? And then try and do it. Go to work, serve God, not just here in the church, but out there in the world, where people are living every day in darkness and sorrow and fear. Find those areas where you can be a blessing to others, even in little ways that might bring encouragement and help to someone in need. Love a little or a lot if you can. Share your faith, shine your light, offer your hope, spread your joy. That is the true gift of the season, this Advent season. The night is far over and the day is near. Now it is time for us to wake up and walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. We're now in the hymn insert, now is the time approaching. Thank you. 
You may be seated. And our prayer concerns for today is for, I can't read this, Matthew, who is having neck surgery soon. Oh, okay, your son Matthew. Okay. Pray for, is that Marjorie Holmes? Madge Holmes? Madge Holmes, who's going through a difficult time with her husband, praying for Jesus to help all who are alone, homeless, and looks like world hungry during the holidays. Pray for Chris Permarini, who has extreme cancer and is going to Dana Farber for new experimental treatment and drugs. And pray for all who are dealing with cancer and another to pray for all who have cancer and are ill, and also let's keep Tom Duty in mind, and also Sue Gatotis, who's having surgery, Mark Johnson, the Gould family, Kevin Lacoste, Ernie Bobolin, Diane Minty, Pat Spaulding, and Travis Heath. Let us go before God now in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the promise of your coming day when your perfect will will be accomplished for all humanity. We thank you for Jesus Christ who came to bring us your grace and who will come again to complete his work. We thank you also for your spirit who continues to call to us that we may live in hope and walk in your light. And so with faith and joy, we come to you now asking for your strength and guidance. We pray, O oh God, for your church and for this congregation Awaken us to your coming day and strengthen our wills that we might rise up, clothe ourselves with the life of Christ, and move forward to labor for your kingdom. We pray also for all who lead the nations of the world. May they be true to your ways of peace and justice. We pray for all who are struggling in the midst of darkness. May the burdened know your peace, the disheartened gain your hope, and the weary find renewal. Grant also your healing to the ill, your comfort to the mourning and your aid to the needy. We lift up also all the joys and concerns that we have named here today and all that remain unnamed as we come before you now in the quiet of our hearts. We praise you, holy God, for the certainty of your grace and the promise of your presence with us now and forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
We are called to be watchful for the day of Christ's coming and wise in living for God's kingdom. We are entrusted with the resources that can bring peace and prosperity, hope and grace to the world. May the message of God's love find expression through our gifts and the ministry of this church. Let us give in faith. Thank you, God, for the revelation of Jesus Christ and the enlightening gift of your spirit. We seek to walk in your walk, walk in your light, and follow the paths where you lead. We offer you these gifts in our lives to make the good news of salvation known. May the coming day of Christ arrive soon. Amen.
beloved in Christ, the Gospel of Luke records that on the first day of the week, the same day in which Jesus was raised from dead, he sat at table with two of his disciples and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. And so, for centuries, men and women, youth and children have come from the east and the west, the north and the south, and gathered about Christ's table. For this is the joyful, welcoming feast of the people of God. Here, Christ is the host, and we are his guests. This table is open to everyone who wishes to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of Christ's people. Let us join together in prayer. We give you our thanks and praise, O God, for according to your promise, the night is nearly over and your dawn is, light is dawning. In the beginning, you called forth light, created the earth, and filled it with life. When we turned from your glorious presence, you did not abandon us in our darkness, but called to us through the prophets and showed us visions of your coming day of redemption. In the fullness of time, you came in your son, Jesus Christ, announcing the good news of your salvation, bringing sight to the blind, release to the captives, and peace and justice for all peoples. When the powers of darkness put him to death, you raised him to new life and promised a day when he will come at an unexpected hour and gather up your faithful ones, bringing them into your eternal presence with glory. We await that day with joyful anticipation as we celebrate here a foretaste of that heavenly blanket. And so we ask you, O God, to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and cup, that we may know Christ's presence here in bread and cup and be transformed into, into his image for the life of the world. Amen. We gather now and remember that on the night he was handed over, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In his name, this bread is offered to you. Please hold it and we will share together. Let us join together now in the hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 110 in your red hymnal. And it's uh, verses 1 and 2 only. What? Yeah, what? Oh, you do if you want to sing. If you know the first two, go right ahead. <laughs>
let us join together now in our common commission. Let us go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no one evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all persons, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go now into the world, and may your love keep on growing together with knowledge and all wisdom, so that you will be able to choose what is best. May you be free from all iniquity and blame on the day of Christ, with your lives filled with the true qualities that only Jesus Christ can produce, which will bring glory and praise to God. Go now in peace to love and serve our Lord. Amen. <laughs>